Hey folks, I'm Scott Hanselman. Real quick video here to give you an understanding about how the Windows subsystem for Linux works and maybe clear up some of the confusion there is around the file system. So I'm here on Windows and if I go and go to developer mode, you can find that under settings. Just go to the start menu and type in developer mode. Click on developer mode. Let it do its thing. And then we'll go and look at Windows features. Scroll down to the bottom here and say Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay. And then that will give you a bash. Okay. This is bash. You can just go to the start menu and type bash. You can prove it by typing lsb underscore release dash a. You can see that it is Ubuntu. Okay. This is Ubuntu 16.04. This is a little confusing, but I want to make sure that it's clear to everybody. This is really Ubuntu, okay? This is not Sigwin, this is not fake Ubuntu or something else. These are the, the real user mode binaries that are, see, that's really bash. And if I dig into these things and figure out where they are, you notice that they have a, like a weird little icon there. This bash is showing up alongside these Windows processes, but it is still a Linux process. These are the what they call the ELF binaries except there's no kernel. Here's the part that's interesting. When you do something, when you list out some files, okay, when you list out files, you're talking to the file system. That's not happening on the Ubuntu kernel. That's those syscalls are happening on the Windows kernel. So the Windows kernel is happening, is, uh, is handling that work. Now, here's where things get a little bit confusing. If I go to my home folder, slash home slash Scott. That is the Linux file system. You can't see that from Windows. Okay, here's where the confusion happens. I just said you can't see that. Well, you can, but you really, 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 really shouldn't. And by really, I mean don't. Just don't even bother. You have no business being down here. It's somewhere in app data, local, blah, blah, blah. Where is it? There's actually entire articles about why you shouldn't do this. And people are, are sad. Here's an article. Do not under any circumstances create or modify Linux files with Windows apps. Okay. It's down in app data local. I think they've even hidden it. So deeply that you'd have to hurt yourself to do it. Don't go in here. Don't go in here. Now, how do you have a big warning in all red, do not under any circumstances create or modify Linux files using Windows apps, but then do development? Okay, well, that statement that they made there is a little bit heavy-handed. What they're saying is, don't mess around on the Linux file system. They need to update that blog post. There's a Windows file system because you're in a Windows computer. If you go to MNT, there's your mount points. There's my C drive. Here's users, Scott, desktop. Do your work over here. I actually have a D drive where I put my GitHub stuff. Okay. I made an alias so I can type desktop. Oops, I thought I made an alias. There it is. And that puts me on mount C users desktop. Okay. From here is where you do your work. Put your work on your Windows drive. Then you can use whatever makes you happy. So for example, let's go and make a new folder called fancy rails. Okay. Remember I'm on Ubuntu and what I did is I just ran through how to set up rails on Ubuntu. I followed the exact instructions. It did take about 30 minutes. It was tedious. I had to go through this whole process. So let's get all the way down to the end. Pass the complainers. There we go. And let's do this. Rails new my app. Rails new my app. See? You can actually watch all of that happen. See? There's Ruby. But this, notice that that Ruby that just went by there, that Ruby is Linux Ruby. Okay? Let's go into my app. 
oops, rake db create. Go and run that. Again, you can watch this happening because we're sharing with Windows. Okay, that's done. Rails server. This makes Rails development on Windows way easier because you're not in Windows. This is going to go and file up, fire up Rails. There we go. Port 3000. Now, it's localhost port 3000 running on Linux. See? The Linux subsystem shares ports with the Windows subsystem. So localhost is localhost. This is not a virtual machine. This is not another computer. It is still Windows. And that's why I keep coming back into the task manager because it's Linux except Windows can run Linux now. Right? Now let's say I want to edit this. Remember where I am, mount users desktop. I'm going to go and type code dot and I'm going to fire up Visual Studio code. I'm on Windows. Okay, This is Windows here and I'm talking to the Windows file system. So I'm going to just snap bash on the left and I'll have Visual Studio code here on the right. See? I've got a great experience here. I can use all of my Ruby tools that work within Visual Studio Code. It knows about Ruby. It knows about CSS. Look, it even did the colors and everything for me automatically. All my nice icons. It knows about gem files. I can do all that work here. I can edit these files and they won't hurt anything, okay? Because I am on the C drive. What you don't want to do is dig around down in app data looking for the Linux files. So you can do your node work, you can do your C++ work, whatever makes you happy. Just do it on the C drive. So I went <clears throat> I went and I made a desktop alias. Alias desktop and all it does is CD to the mount point. Your mount point could be whatever. You could make you could go like this alias github equals uh, CD mount D github github See? So make it easier for yourself. Some people like to make a win home. So you can have a Windows home. But just remember that you do your work there. You can use whatever editor makes you happy. Uh, and I hope you check it out. It's on Windows 10. Uh, see you later.